Is David Martinez alive? This is a question that's been pondered and debated since the release of Edge Runners. This whole situation actually hits me with a wave of nostalgia, thinking back on Halo Reach. Reach was another scenario in which a group you became familiar with are slowly picked off throughout the storyline, and there was no limit to the theories of Noble Six being alive. Despite watching him get stabbed and shot countless times in the final scene, many of us bought into the theory that he was hopefully hiding out in a cave on Reach. There's still hope, I swear guys. I digress though. Obviously, Main's crew within Edge Runners is slowly picked off as well, eventually leading us to the final confrontation at Arasaka Tower. David storms the tower with his newly equipped Immunoblocker Addict Borg Conversion and saves Lucy. Though unfortunately, this reunion is cut short with the introduction of Adam Smasher into the fold. We all know where it goes from there. Rebecca stomped, and David folded like a lawn chair. Since his ending, I've seen a large amount of theories thrown out into the mix. So, I want to present my own personal theories and ideas to this topic. Did David survive? Could he return in any form? Etc. The most popular theory I've seen tossed around is that David Martinez was soul killed. If you're familiar with my channel, you're extremely familiar with Soul Killer and its history. I've covered it in relation to plenty of characters possibly being alive in the formation of a construct or even a cloned body. For those of us who don't fully grasp Soul Killer, it's a black program written by the infamous netrunner Paul Cunningham. She originally designed it while working for ITS as a way to preserve consciousness and memories of dying individuals. The goal was to transfer this AI construct into a cloned body. While the first version left an empty husk, later versions either completely fried the individual or kept the body alive, capable of having the engram placed back into the original body. More specifically, this was developed by Hanako Arasaka. She focused on Alt's original version of using the program to preserve a person's consciousness and transfer it into a clone body. In contrast, previous versions of Soul Killer were used by Arasaka as a weapon. This later became the Superior Soul program. This is why during the Devil ending, we discover Saburo Arasaka's engram despite watching him be strangled directly in front of us. He was soul killed and copied as an engram at some point before his death which is why he doesn't end up with a glitchy, incomplete construct like Jackie's, who was soul killed after his death. Remember anything? About what happened? Hit the major leagues essay! Running with Dex! Badass Black Jesus of the Afterlife! A heap of Bartley gold plated cool! Not bad, eh? There's a major issue in relation to David Martinez, though. While, yes, Adam Smasher is clearly knowledgeable of Soul Killer and makes a point out of David being an individual that might perform as an interesting construct, David Martinez clearly doesn't wish to go any further towards a fate like that. Though we don't know if David entirely knew what he meant by this, he probably had no issue dying either way at this point, seeing as Lucy escaped and he was there to face the consequences of being reckless during his time edge running. You know, you could prove an interesting construct. Whatever, Zoom. Like I give a shit. Oh well. <laughs> So, you're probably asking, so what? Adam Smasher is a psychopath who clearly has zero regard for any humans around him. Why would he care what David wants? Well, there's actually several reasons behind why Smasher wouldn't force David into becoming a construct. The first of which being that the creation, interrogation, and storage of engrams is a goal held by Arasaka and his family members, not Smasher. While Smasher might be their pet dog, it is simply because they saved him, so in a weird sense he feels that he owes them that much as long as they give him what he wants, which tends to be missions with a lot of civilian casualties. We know this from the entry in the Firestorm Shockwave books. He benefits from working with Arasaka, but in a sense he does a bare minimum when it disregard for human life. David isn't necessarily the type of human Smasher despises. David is clearly approaching a full Borg conversion, especially once he is within the Arasaka cyberskeleton. 
Smasher even claims that David put up a decent fight. <laughs> I had some fun after all. Something Smasher normally wouldn't state after a victory. It's clear there's a level of respect Smasher has for David. Something we would never see between Smasher and the minimalist Morgan Blackhand. Smasher was fully aware of David's wishes and the sort of hell Soul Killer can put someone through. So in a sense, Smasher actually showed David mercy. We know this because of a line of fire of his auto shotgun, along with the transition, makes it relatively clear he shot David in the head. A huge necessity for Soul Killer to be produced is that the brain is intact and at the bare minimum alive recently enough to pull all the information from. Smasher aiming for the head makes it clear he was preventing any possibility of David having Soul Killer forced upon him. So both the Secure Your Soul program, or even a version of just regurgitated memories, are completely out of the mix. So, the only way for David Martinez to be a functioning construct in any way, shape, or form, he would have needed to be Soul Killed sometime before the final Arasaka Tower confrontation, which only really leaves one possibility open, which would be the Arasaka Academy David was enrolled at. Though I have to say I highly doubt Arasaka is somehow managing a soul kill and copying grams of every kid that walks their way through the academy, even if it's for some nefarious plot. However, this isn't all. You might recall when David was kidnapped by Jimmy Karasaki, the brain dance editor. Karasaki happened to reveal a major piece of information that could allow us to see David in some form in the future. Listen to this. You see... All military prototypes come with a built-in brain dance scroller. Obviously, David is wearing a military grade Sandy, the same one that Cyber Psycho James Norris had his BD scrolled from, meaning that whoever recovered David Sandy, assumingly Arasaka, would have access to footage from a large portion of David's time edge running. While this wouldn't be considered him being alive for obvious reasons, this allows us the opportunity to view more of David's life and missions edge running in either Phantom Liberty, Cyberpunk O'Brien, or the tabletop RPGs in some form. I guess we will have to wait and see. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Let me know all your thoughts and feedback down below. Do you believe we could see David Martinez again in any way, shape, or form? If you liked the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and check out my channel for in-depth cyberpunk content. Thank you to every member on screen for the continued support. I appreciate every single one of you and I'm glad that tunes like you guys view my content. If you'd like to become a member as well, I now have memberships open for as little as $1 a month. You can get some perks such as emoticons, your name in the end scroll of each video, and much more. Have a great week, and see you later, tunes.